Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today we are building an old style colonial home for a set of grandparents who unfortunately are no longer of this sim world, <laughs> uh, but they have left their very large and beautiful mansion to their granddaughter. The only thing is they were very estranged from their granddaughter and also from their son, uh, the father of their granddaughter, and the rest of their family because they were sort of hiding a secret about their livelihood and what they did for a living. And they thought that if their family knew that it would somehow put them in danger or just cause them you know, some kind of unrest. So they figured it was better to just separate themselves from their family and just support them, you know, by sending money or sending gifts or, you know, providing for their family in a very monetary way, but just not necessarily being super involved. Now that this granddaughter has inherited the home and most of the fortune that her grandparents left her, she is left to kind of figure out all the rest of the pieces and, you know, solve this little mystery of what her grandparents did for a living and how that can affect the rest of her life and what she's going to do with this home. So you'll see I have come up with the basic shell. I just kind of wanted it to be very boxy and very, you know, symmetrical. Like it was a very intentional build because I think that those homes usually are very intentional and symmetrical and just very, you know, kind of, kind of plain to be honest with you. I tried to give it a little bit of a fun spin. Like back here there is is a kind of asymmetrical look to it but I did make sure that the roof pieces looked like they kind of sort of added up and then all around the sides I kind of surrounded it with this like half hipped roof ever so slightly and just kind of it almost looks like it's wearing a skirt on the upper half but I think it looks really fun so I hope you enjoy that but this home has a little bit of a secret basement which I think in my mind the granddaughter does not know that it is there. It is hidden by a bookcase door. So I think that she just has not discovered that yet. And that is part of the storyline. I'm envisioning that she will come across the bookcase and maybe like go to get a book out of it and then realize that it is actually a door. And that is when she will stumble upon the secret basement. But you will see that much, much later. First, we are just going to finish up the roofing of this home. And I did use my little trick with like the angles of the roof to make a fun little swoopy roof right in the front here. I thought that was nice. I also repeat that in the back. And I wanted to keep it very like white and maybe off-white tones. I wasn't trying to be super flashy with the colors on the exterior of this home. And also the interior ends up being kind of beige and a little bit low-key, a little bit vintage feeling. It, it definitely feels like a home for grandparents. It's also not super duper cluttered. In my mind, because of who her grandparents are, they kind of had a feeling that what was going to happen was going to happen. So they made preparations ahead of time. They put certain things away. They made sure everything was very neat and tidy. And uh, yeah, so we'll get into that once we explore the basement. You'll see I just added a ladder to the basement. And that is what we will explore very shortly. But first, I'm going to add some lighting to get a better idea of what we're working with. Also, the staircase was the first thing I started with because that is the only part of the home that I was absolutely sure of how I wanted to build it. So I made the staircase first and then basically built the rest of the house around that. <laughs> and it was definitely a little bit different. I don't usually do that, but I thought it was fun to start somewhere different and see where it took me the rest of the way through the build. And then I also added a lot of columns on all of the corners and also on the front part where there's going to be a little upper balcony. It's not a covered balcony, but the lower part is. And then I also added a lot of stone. So the bottom part of this home is all get together stonework as well as the foundation. And then the fence, I believe, is also from get together or it might be from vampires. It's either from get together or vampires. So don't quote me on that. But we have more of these columns going in. 
I just really liked the stark white right on the stone. I thought that was a nice touch. You'll also see that the basement is making the terrain in the back of the house here raise up a little bit and kind of clip into the foundation. Don't worry about that. We cover that with landscaping and we move some stuff around so you don't even see it. I didn't feel like lowering the basement too much more because I thought that would look weird with the ladder going down. It would like leave kind of a void space. So I just kind of covered it with some foundation back here. And then I kind of made it go along the fence line, the rest of this little back porch space. And then I covered it with the same foundation from the rest of the home. So it kind of blends in. Now back here, I repeated these kind of gabled roof pieces that are like, I don't know, they're almost like little turrets. I repeated them on either side. So there's a little bit of covered space at the back porch areas. There are two sides to the back porch and backyard space. One goes to a garden space and the other goes to a tiny little graveyard. So spoiler alert on that, but I think that is where the grandparents have been buried for now. I guess in The Sims, you can say for now because you can always move their plots and it's not a big deal. My thought is that when the new pack comes out, if you wanted to play with this home and you wanted to make a cemetery in Forgotten Hollow, you could take their headstones and put them in the cemetery that you create in Forgotten Hollow or in the New World. Either way, I think this home could probably fit well into the New World. I'm very, very excited for the new pack, by the way. I was just completely inspired by that. So that is where this idea came from. Like a pair of grandparents who left their home and their fortune to their grandchild. And there's a lot of secrecy behind everything involved with the grandparents. <laughs> and so that's where I ran with this idea. And then here we are starting on the living room. You'll see I already mapped out the kitchen area where the countertops are and stuff. But here I'm just in the living room putting down the fireplace from cats and dogs and these lovely big windows and of course the couch and love seats. Over here I did put a big bookshelf next to the bookcase door. I ended up getting rid of that later on. But then here I had to rearrange my stairs completely because I realized that if I were to put a railing on the stairs, it would put a piece of railing right down the middle. And that is not what I wanted. So that was not fun to have to figure out, but I did have to create a platform and then place these little stairs on either side of the platform and then create another set of double stairs going up to the next level. So yeah, it was not um, not ideal, but it, I did make it work. And I think it still looks really nice in the end. It has two walls on either side and then it has kind of a mezzanine level. So you can look down into the lower level from the upper level. I thought that was really nice, but I did end up moving this front piece of the house out, just one tile. So there'd be some more space to move around the staircase. Then here we're working on the bedroom that I believe was their spare bedroom. This is the bedroom that their granddaughter ends up staying in. It is very blue, tried to keep it very plain. Lots of get together and also cats and dogs furniture. The lamps are base game. And then I threw on some lovely little adornments on the dresser. There's just a little flower vase and some of these lovely perfumes from Vintage Glamour. I thought they were kind of fun and like bright, which is very contrasted to the rest of the room, which is very plain and like wood paneling, wood floors, just not a whole lot going on in this room. Like I said, I think this was their spare room, so they didn't really do too much decorating. There only ends up being like one painting on the wall. And of course, it's of the creepy haunted mansion, but they are in Forgotten Hollow. So I thought that it made sense. Also, a little potted plant in the corner. Now, the bathrooms are really fun. I use the wallpaper from high school years and then the flooring from growing together. But we'll get back to the cluttering of those later on because I was trying to at least get the basic shape and color of these rooms figured out out. This is the grandparents room. It is very dark. It is very red. It is very moody and I love it so much. So we have the end tables from get together. The bed is I believe just from base game and then the lamps on the end table are from base game as well. They're part of the mega collection and then I have the dresser and then the same mirror just above it. It's a little weathered. I decided to put a bouquet of flowers on top of the dresser and then a candelabra that came with the love struck pack and I just kind of pair them next to each other. I think they look really pretty with each other very romantic and kind of moody <laughs> I don't know I just I don't know what I was trying to go for in this room but I knew that I wanted to use red and something really bold and colorful and then these huge sweepy curtains from base game as well and this lovely hanging light from cottage living some paintings on the wall just these like old 
vintage photos, I think. I thought they just looked really nice. And a little easy chair here in the corner. I was going to go with red, but I thought that was a little much, so I changed it to more of a beige tone. Back in the bathroom, we have the hutches going in from Crystal Creations. I end up cluttering them up with a bunch of towels, so you'll see that very shortly. But back to the hallway, I'm definitely saving those bathrooms for last. I did use this wallpaper that has the paneling and then on the corners they have like the little crest shape I just thought that was fun and different and then down here we have a very plain wallpaper on the walls and on the foundation where the step platform is it's just kind of plain wood paneling I thought that that fit nicely a little ottoman here right in the center of the entryway and a coat rack and two plants Again, just wanted to keep it very like simple, like they kind of planned it this way. Also these base game curtains, which I never use, and some paintings on either side of the hallway just to kind of fill in that space. And then the kitchen, the walls end up being base game as well as the floor tile. And I haven't used this like kind of muted green wall paint with the pink tile or like the terracotta color tile. I don't know what that is, but it's really pretty. So I thought that looked kind of old and vintage, like an Italian kitchen to me. <laughs> and then we are just cluttering it up with a couple plants, my favorite bathroom clutter stuff, the soap pump and the soap dish, which I imagine is a sponge. And then all of the appliances, which I believe are all base game, except all the little clutter pieces from Home Chef Hustle and cool kitchen stuff, because I need to add those. I really love that dish rack. It's one of my favorites. Also a little fruit bowl. And of course the trash can, I did not forget that this time. And then we have this little hutch piece from the Cozy Bistro Kit, and I just kind of clutter it up with some random knickknacks in a little bit. There's a plant in the corner. We also have a nectar bottle. We have some plates. We have the mortar and pestle and some coffee mugs, and then a little tiny plant up here just because it's cute. Little salt and pepper shaker with some napkins. I just thought that was very formal. and <laughs> It looked really nice in this kitchen, so I threw that in there. And then some more wall lights. Those are from Cozy Bistro as well. The hanging lights in the kitchen are from Growing together and then here in the bathroom downstairs is pretty much the same as the upstairs but I have all my bathroom clutter stuff I have a little medicine cabinet a lovely flower from dine out and then also these lovely like perfume or lotions whatever those are and then we have a towel on the wall from base game and a little towel next to the sink from growing together because it is my favorite little hanging towel for hands and then just my standard bathroom light now over here in this space that goes down to the basement I picked out just some plain wood paneling for the walls, a little hanging light bulb on the ceiling, and that is it for now. <laughs> Again, we're just leaving lots of cliffhangers. But then in the living room, we kept it very nice and simple and beige. I love these big flowy curtains in this like half circle shape. They fit those big windows so nicely. And then we pick out a rug from Growing Together because it is one of my favorites and it looks very oriental and fancy. And then I took the painting TV and I used Toolmod to move it into the right position so it covers the mirror on this fireplace because I think that these grandparents still enjoyed their fair amount of TV. They were just, you know, they were a little old fashioned, but I don't think that they were <laughs> completely devoid of technology. So I had that TV mounted there where the mirror is instead. And I think it looks really nice. Added some plants, added some more curtains and also some stuff to the coffee table in the middle. And I just think this room came out super cute and very charming. Over here is where I decided to get rid of this bookshelf though, and I add a desk instead from Base Game, which I don't know if I've ever used. It is very ornate and very fancy looking. And then also this chair, which is a career unlock, I believe. And then the, <laughs> the computer from Cottage Living, which is like a typewriter. I just thought it looked really fun. And a little light on the table from Cozy Bistro. Ignore all the many plants all over this desk, but I needed to cover every single slot so that I could get this plant up here where there is no slot on the top of the desk and then I deleted all those other plants also added a little selection of books so that your sim can actually read and some diplomas on the back wall and then over here we have another console table with a lot of flowers on it thought it was very pretty there's also a hanging plant and then I add some more of these candelabras from Love Struck, and I just position everything on the table to look very pretty and very romantic and intentional I think that that corner is just so cute and so picturesque. I love it so much. And then over here by the door, we have another ottoman. I believe that one is also from Vintage Glamour. And then in the dining room, I'm picking out some curtains 
from the Modern Lux kit to put on this large window as well as the wallpaper from Cozy Bistro kit. And we are repeating the same hanging light from Cottage Living. I also pick out this buffet table from Growing Together, which I end up moving to the other side of the room after I exchange the dining table for this one from Base Game. I believe the chairs are also from Base Game. And then here's this buffet table moving over here to this far wall. And I thought two mirrors here next to each other squished together would be nice, but later on I do decide to change that mirror because I came back to it later on. And this is the room that I started in. So I added this lovely wall plant from Lovestruck first, and then also a rug from Werewolves, believe it or not, underneath the dining room table. I just used Tool Mod to get it to the right size that I wanted. Some more plants in either corner, because of course, when there is a corner, you must put a plant. It is the rule. And then a plant in the middle of the table too, another flower vase with a bouquet of flowers from Love Struck. I just thought it was so pretty. And over here, also adding a drinks tray to the buffet table. And then I swap out the mirror completely for this one from Cozy Bistro because I remembered that it had these like ornate designs on it and I thought it looked nice. Also some paintings from Cozy Bistro with like the nectar and just showcasing that vintage art I thought was really, really pretty. And that is it for our dining room. Now we are in the room that heads down to the basement. I thought it'd be fun to add some cobwebs and make it look kind of spooky, maybe a little dirty, a little unkempt. There's a mouse hole. And then you come down here and there is a little tiny entryway to the rest of the room, which I will be adding an archway to. But here is our seance table and we have our chairs from Paranormal Stuff Pack. Everything in here is from Paranormal Stuff Pack. We have another buffet table. We have the fortune tellers globe and then we have some knickknacks all over the table and the shelves we have these lovely candles that came with the pack and then I size down these lovely hanging lanterns so they don't kind of intersect with where your sims are going to sit also this little love seat this big plant also these end tables I just threw everything from the selection down here because I wanted this to be their medium room so I think that the grandparents are actually secret psychic mediums and they were seeing clients who you know basically threatened like hey if you tell anybody that we were here or that we asked for you to look into the things for us you know we will we know where you live kind of thing <laughs> so i think that's why they were very secretive and maybe they had some ghostly you know encounters that made them you know, a little fearful for their family. So they thought it would be better to just keep it to themselves. But now they're ready to share it with their granddaughter because they have been keeping tabs and they know that their granddaughter has an affinity for the paranormal and that she would be the perfect fit to take over the family business, basically. So I think that uh, it's, it's a fun storyline to play with and I'm actually very excited. And then I just cluttered everything up in this room to be very fun and very spooky and very paranormally. I don't know. It was a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that little twist. Now, a lot of this is going to be landscaping. I picked out a lot of fun flowering bushes. Again, I was trying to keep with the symmetry and trying to keep it very, very nice and neat and tidy. Like this is very well kept. Like they had a gardener who came here and did all of the pruning and they didn't really have to worry about anything. So, you know, since they have passed and their gardener has not been paid, there is a little bit of overgrown grass, which you will see in the screenshots. I put in some clumps of grass from Cottage Living to kind of give the illusion that like maybe the gardener hasn't been here in a while. No one's mowed the lawn in a little bit. I thought that, that was a nice touch. Now here you'll also see I am adding all of these headstones. Now a lot of them are from vampires and I just kind of placed them here for no reason. But then the actual headstones those are sims I actually made for this household to play test. So I actually made the grandparents, I made their son, and I made their granddaughter. And then I had to, you know, fiddle around with the whole family thing and move the dad out and move the daughter out and kind of move her back in after they passed. It was a whole thing. It took me a while, but I really wanted to illustrate that in the screenshots and I wanted to make sure I had actual headstones and I wanted to be able to get good screenshots of the granddaughter you know kind of accepting the passing of her grandparents and kind of taking over the home a little bit so I hope that you enjoy the effort I put into that but we are starting on our little garden plot over here I did kind of go hog wild I just kind of threw in a whole bunch of plants for no reason at all I was just thinking about what plants 
you know, they might grow and I kind of threw them all over the place. So I did have to kind of pick and choose after I had them planted by our sim. But I think that it ends up looking really nice in the end. And she ended up hiring a gardener because she wasn't going to take care of it. So, <laughs> And she has the money to do so because her grandparents left her a good sum of money. And now we're going to work on the balcony back here. We have a telescope. We have a chess table. It is very cute. It is very pretty. I think that having a lot of skill building items here is very important because, you know, your sim's going to get bored here. I think if she doesn't have something else to do other than seances, I think she's going to need to exercise other parts of her brain a little bit. And then up here in the upstairs hallway, I didn't really know what to do. So I just kind of added some plants and some more of these like chaise lounge chairs on either side of either bedroom door. And I just was trying to make it seem like this upstairs landing is very cozy and very, you know, simple, like nothing too crazy. Also some of these plants from the Crystal Creations kit because they're so nice. And this rug from Cats and Dogs right at the top of the stair landing. Here are those clumps of grass that I threw around. I just wanted it to look really fun and like overgrown, maybe a little weedy, like they haven't been tended to recently. Also added two chimneys up here to the roof because I thought those gave it a nice touch. And here is a final look at our home. The sun is coming up in Forgotten Hollow and I just think it came out so nice. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you're most looking forward to in the new pack because I personally am just looking forward to building cemeteries. I cannot wait to build cemeteries and mausoleums and funeral spots. I just, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. And uh, to play with more of these family dynamic storylines where someone passes away and you have to figure out who's getting the inheritance and someone's mad about it and someone else like couldn't care less. I just think it's so fun. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. And please leave a comment on what you would like to see next because I really enjoy hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for joining me here today. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.